Retro Ghetto. Hi everybody, welcome to this week's Ghetto Vlog. Very quick intro this week. As you can see, I'm just about to head out the door, which of course means a game hunt, right? So, I was sitting in here last night playing Bioshock. I've just started playing Bioshock. And I was thinking to myself, when I was planning this hunt, do I want to go to charity shops? Do I want to go to like a dedicated video game shop? Or do I want to go to a CX that I've never been to before? And I was sitting there planning it and I thought, you know what? I want to do all three. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to be heading to Alfreton, a town full of charity shops. From there, we're going to go to Kirkby Sales and Exchange. Um, absolutely love that shop. Always rammed full of video games, both modern and retro. And then from there, I'm going to head up to somewhere I've never been before. Um, Sutton in Ashfield. They've got a CEX store there. I'm sure there's loads of other stuff for us to be looking at, charity shops, etc. So that's the plan. Let's go. Okay, here we are, first stop, Alfreton. Um, been here a couple of times earlier in the year. Um, yeah, just a town that's full of charity shops, really. Uh, I mean, a charity shop's only as good as what you find inside it, so let's hope we find something inside one, or more than one. Okay, back in the car and it's getting cold out there, but had to go to birds, all right? If you know, you know. But I did manage to pick up one game for my collection, actually, a game that I've been hoping to add. And I always forget because it's a game I get confused with something else. And that is Shadow of Rome. Obviously, you guys know how much I love my Romans. I love my mythology. I love my ancient history when it comes to this kind of thing. So this is like a must for me, right? But the reason I don't really own it is I always get it confused with, is it... Um, Spartan, Total, something or other. There is another game, I'll pop it on screen now, that I always get it confused with. Um, so I always get confused as to which one I own, but I'm pretty sure I don't own this one. So for me, with my interests, building a Roman army, <laughs> a glaring omission from my collection. So always nice to find these games in person. So I was happy with that. But other than that, there wasn't really much doing. So we're going to head now to Kirkby Sales and Exchange. Nina's always got great stuff in that shop. Um, I actually spent this morning laboriously taking apart that Jazz Lego set that I've got. Teamed with that Lego farm we had last week, I've got a couple of nice Lego sets. I'm taking them with me to see if that's something she'd be interested in. Because they do act as like a pawnbroker as well, you can sort of sell uh, most goods there should they want them. So yeah man, we're going to head there now and uh, let's hope we find more stuff there than we did here.
service and great prices on great products and a cup of tea. I do like this shop. I've got some nice stuff as well, so yeah, I'm happy with that. Bag full. Oh man, every time I go there, I leave with a big smile and a big bag. I gotta say, I absolutely love that shop. Every time I go, I leave with amazing stuff, of which there's a carrier bag full. Amazing stuff. Great service. See, where else can I have a cup of tea, a nice chat, I wander around, perusing the shelves, and yeah. Um, right, okay, they also tipped me off for uh, a couple of shops that are in Sutton, in Ashfield? Yeah, Sutton in Ashfield, I always forget what it's called. Never been to this place before. I was pretty much going for the CEX charity shops, but apparently there's a couple of other sort of like pawnbroker style shops that will have video games in, some retro. So yeah, this hunt looks like it's gonna get even better. So we're heading there now. I've just been into the, is it B&M or Home Bargains behind me? I don't know, they're all the same. I'm gonna eat my high protein Mars cookie, my shake. What else did I buy? I'm not sure about this. Moose juice, <laughs> extreme energy. I'm not really an energy drink guy, if I'm being honest. Not. I've got vices, but it's not uh, caffeine. But uh, what I tend to do with these is use them as a pre-workout. This will last me about three days. I just put it in the fridge, have a few swallows. I think it's more of a mental thing than anything uh, before I work out. I don't know why I'm telling you this. I'm sure you're not bothered. But uh, yeah, next time you see me, we'll be in Sutton and Ashfield, either CEX or some other random shop where we'll be hunting for video games. Let's go. Okay, so here we are. My first ever visit to Sutton in Ashfield. Uh, there's a big snowman behind me, which is great for mid-November. <laughs> um, right, okay, I can see CEX just ahead of me. Just up there. That's where we're living. Very impressed. Um, nice big shop, decent retro selection. Uh, yeah, man. Let's see what
Okay, I was really impressed with that CEX. Um, nice uh, stock, all of it, well, most of it was on the shelves. It wasn't one of them where every steel book was behind the counter. Big shot, nice retro selection, yeah. Uh, very impressed with that. But apparently, there might be somewhere that sells video games on the local market. So we're gonna head there now. And then after that, as I say, there's a couple of pawn shops, pawnbroker type places uh, we need to go and look at as well. So let's keep it going. Right, there's definitely no games in there. I mean, if you want meat or sewing supplies, uh, that's your place, but definitely no video games. <laughs> Okay, so I'm making my way to the last stop now. Um, a like cash converter style place. I hope it's worth it because it's a bit of a trek outside of the sort of like town centre. So, and it's damn cold and it's raining. This looks like my kind of shop. So you build them, do you? Yeah, I build them. I, I can cover them with anything you want. Generally, if you want retro stuff, yeah, yeah, Pac-Man, Space Invaders, yeah, yeah. But sometimes we want Led Zeppelin up in Floyd or something. And yeah, that something can different. That's for me. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> this is like, oh my god. Yeah, yeah. This Dreamcast, all in mint condition. Yeah. Mint condition. Grandia. So like, um, it's just like your old games, and I've got some like 
some of these games are 200 quid. Yeah, I've had a look at some of them, yeah, yeah. Some nice bits. I do all that kind of thing. But then I delve into your memorabilia. Yeah, yeah. You know. Sand. But I've never got any stock, I'm always selling it. People come from all over. Oh, that's what it's for, isn't it? And I sell dogs, look. Here, look. Dogs for sale. 800 quid, here is. <laughs> I'm alright for a dog. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> Might one get one free at the moment because he's just had both. Nah, you're alright. <laughs> Okay, so that was Sutton in Ashfield, and that was supposed to be the last stop. I should be heading home now, but it's not often I come this way. Like I said, I've never been here before. There's another CEX, 12 minutes away. That takes me to Mansfield. Never been to Mansfield. Part of me feels like while I'm here, it's the best time, right, to go and have a look, a new CEX, a new area. It is gonna <laughs> drastically uh, increase the time in which I get home. And the weather's not great. But this is what I do, right? So looks like we're going to Mansfield. <laughs> As you can see, I've made it to Mansfield. No idea where I'm going. Never been here in my life. But uh, <laughs> apparently there's a CX, so uh, let's see. A couple of charity shops as well, so let's go to them first. Yeah, this is the sort of sofa I need, I think. The next game room improvement. Like this. Hmm. Maybe, maybe. Okay, so a decent CEX, really nicely laid out. Again, quite a big store. They took a lot of care in, um, as I say, the store's layout, the signage and everything. 
Um, picked up a nice game, but a real high volume of covers reprinted for some reason. It was loads, way more than I've ever seen in one store before. And not only that, when I was getting served, the woman behind the counter, she was printing off loads more and putting them into cases. I don't know why, but she must have been printing 20 if not more. Uh, and the shelves were littered with them. So yeah, just make sure you're double checking if you're ever in the Mansfield CEX uh, for reprinted covers. I don't know if someone's been in and stole a load of boxes or they've had some damage. I just can't think of any other reason why you would have so many in one store. But uh, apparently, uh, according to Google, there is a video game shop in Mansfield. So obviously, whilst I'm here, <laughs> I've got to go and take a look, right? Uh, okay, so it looks more like Games Workshop and board games. Could have been a wasted walk. Not really my cup of tea. No. Oh well. Wow, okay, so that was Alfredton, Kirkby in Ashfield, Sutton in Ashfield, and Mansfield, Haunted, Dawn. And yeah, uh, what a long day, um, uh, but worth it. I'm the sort of person I'd happily go to the other side of the country if I come back with enough stuff and I have a good day. And I definitely did that today. We've got like a a bag full right here of really good stuff. And yeah, like I say, a couple of areas I've never been to before. It's always nice to explore new places and see new shops and stuff like that. And um, yeah, um, it's nice to be home. Don't get me wrong, but let's get into it, shall we? Uh, right. So you guys have already seen. I uh, picked up Shadow of Rome, my only find in uh, Alfreton, um, but a good one. I'm actually tempted to play this tonight. Um, I do need to be cracking on my Bioshock, but this is one I just want to pop in and see how it plays. I watched a little bit of footage and it made me want to play it even more. The only thing that puts me off is it says on Google it's like a 20 hour playthrough. and I'm not sure I can commit 20 hours to a PS2 game if I'm being completely honest, but uh, yeah, definitely one I'm intrigued by Shadow of Rome. Uh, yeah, Capcom. Apparently they stated to make uh, a second Shadow of Rome, but this one didn't sell too well. Um, but yeah, just a glare. And I already said, right, I can't believe I didn't already have that in the collection. Uh, right, okay, so I probably should have put <laughs> some of this in order, right, um, which I didn't. So bear with me one second. We might have to do a little jump cut while I get this all these games sorted out. Right, okay, I think we've now got some sort of semblance of order. So from there, I went to Kirkby Sales and Exchange, but we'll get to that last, because that's where my best pickups were. Um, so after that, I went to Sutton in Ashfield. Like I say, never been there before. I was really impressed with the CEX. Um, nice big store, uh, and lots of decent stuff as well. None of it was really behind the counter. It was all on the shelves, the steel books, the collector's editions, all that kind of thing. Uh, there wasn't too much that I needed, though. Uh, I traded a few bits in. Um, but yeah, just nothing uh, that I really needed to buy except for this. I spent just £1.50 at Sleeping Dogs. Man, I've spoken about this game so many times on the channel. Uh, I absolutely love this game. I need to play through the remastered version because I played this when it came out on the PS3. Um, this and God of War 3 are what sort of pulled me back into gaming, right? I've said again many times how I uh, just had a random night where I thought I'm going to buy a PlayStation 3. I bought two games and it was Sleeping Dogs and uh, God of War 3. And, I never stopped buying or playing games ever since that. So, yeah, um, just another nice essential for the collection. And, uh, yeah, £1.50 spent. Not going to complain about that. Before we get to Mansfield, there was those two sort of like pawnbroker shops. I can't remember what the names of them are. Um, I'll put it on screen now as I go through. It's been a long day, guys. <laughs> it's been a very long day. <laughs> Almost as long as when I uh, beat nine games the other day. If you haven't seen that video, make sure you check it out, by the way. Um... But yeah, uh, so there was those two pawnbroker shops. The first one it was really kind of weird because it had like some real good retro. It had like five N64, like Pokemon N64s, which I've never seen that many in one place. But there wasn't an abundance of other stuff. Um, it was kind of like split between that and airsofting. There was a lot of like rifles and that kind of thing, which I assume is for airsofting. Um, nothing in there that I needed. Uh, and it was one of those shops where anything that was sort of like steelbook or sleeve cover or anything like that was marked up. I'm not knocking that, right? Um, but, you know, because I'm so used to paying the same price at CEX, I don't want to be paying a premium on those things. So nothing really for me. And then I went to the next one. And when I first got there, I thought, wow, this is like, I've walked into like a gold mine here. Walking into this shop that was just full of like weird and wonderful things, big statues, figures, toys, games, you name it, everything in the shop. Almost like um, sensory overload, right? 
And the guy that owns it was, uh, let's just say, a character, like a real character. Um, so he was like very enthusiastically telling me about a lot of his stuff and what he does. And um, but uh, yeah, it, it was an interesting experience going around the shop and having a look at everything. Uh, again, nothing that I needed, um, nothing for me. But if you're ever in that area, definitely go and check those stores out for sure because. Yeah, you're likely to find some real sort of like interesting and obscure items in uh, both of those shops. And then I went on to Mansfield. As I say, I'd never been to Mansfield before. I sat in my car, put it in my phone near a CX. It was like 12 minutes away. I thought, well, if I don't know now, when am I going to go, right? Um, so we headed into Mansfield. And again, uh, another good CEX. Really well laid out, this one. I think I said on the footage that I've never seen so many reprinted covers in my life as there was in that sh store. No idea what was going on. Uh, as to why there were so many um, but I'm frantically trying to get stickers off I did pick up one game and I was really happy to find this one it's another essentials and that is Ratchet and Clank crap in time um, yeah I mean these are great games and the benefit of this this was six pounds but I already own the standard version of this so I'm guessing it trades in for probably about four pound or so so I'll get that money back and uh, yeah, um, just one of them ones that's really nice uh, to tick off the list. And that puts me on a couple of nice essentials for the day. Nothing else really that I needed. Um, I didn't want to be hanging around in Mansfield too long. I was getting to that point in the day where I was ready to come home and uh, <laughs> have a brew, to be honest. Um, right, so that sort of takes me to the highlight of the trip. It usually is the highlight of the trip. I absolutely love going to Kirby Sales and Exchange. Massive, massive shout out to the owner Nina. Just, yeah, she's just great, man. Um, you know, she's really that shop's really a pillar of the community. You just get that sense that when you're in there, there's always people coming in and out. She knows everybody, knows people's names, and everyone's sort of like talking and, and yeah, just a real sort of like nice, almost like family orientated shop. That's what it feels like. And uh, whenever I go in there, I always have a good time. I always get a cup of tea made for me and. You know, we have a good chat. And more importantly, <laughs> I always leave us some really good stuff because they're a very fair, very, very fair shop. Um, they always give good prices for what I trade in and they always sell for good prices. Um, so yeah, you can't argue with that, right? I mean, what more could you ask for? Um, so like I said, I took in both those Lego sets. So I had the jazz quartet set that was in here, just taking a broom. And then we had that botanicals flower set that I found in the charity shop last week. Um, so everything you're about to see cost me nothing. Um, I traded it in straight for this lot. Uh, it went over the original value I was given, but Nina being Nina said, don't worry about it, just take it. So yeah, um, let's get into it then, shall we? So first things first, uh, for the massive sum of one pound, another PS3 Essentials, Far Cry 2. Don't know anything about Far Cry 2. I don't know if the franchise really took off at three because yeah, I still think three is the best. I absolutely love Far Cry 3. Um, but again, just not one that I see all the time. And that's a great day of essentials, right? That's nice. Last week we didn't have any. So to find these three that I needed, very, very happy with that. And then this next one, I'm pretty sure I own this. Um, but it has such a low price on it. I'm just, again, I'm sitting here trying to take these stickers off. I'm slightly concerned about this one because it's still sealed. I'm not satisfied. <laughs> Uh, and that is the uh, Bioshock on the PS3, Speak of the Devil, right? I'm currently playing through Bioshock, but the fact that it was sealed and it was two pounds, like I say, I think I already own it, but I couldn't leave it behind for that. I'll just switch, switch this one out for mine. Uh, I'm taking a nice sleeve cover sealed for two pounds all day long. So yeah, um, that'll be going on the shelf. And then we get to sort of like the bigger hitters, right? Um, as you've seen, there's that kind of retro room in the back. Um, and they always have like new stock. Every time I come, there's always like uh, more retro in there. And yeah, um, they seem to do well to get this stuff. And this was the first game that really caught my eye uh, for the Mega Drive. And that is Strider 2. So this is a 1993 release. And um, yeah, whilst it came out to sort of like a decent critical acclaim at the time, from what I hear, this is now considered to be somewhat the black sheep of the Strider family. So much so, actually, that Capcom actually made an in-house game out of arcades in 1999, and they just called it Strider 2. So <laughs> it's like they're trying to just forget this one ever happened, but look at that box art. Love that. And, uh, of course, I own the original, so I had to have them both, right? It's just, yeah, just nice to have both of them on the Mega Drive. 
from what I understand, the level design is not as good as this one uh, on this one as it is on the first, and I think that's sort of like the main sort of criticism uh, of that again. But um, yeah, I mean, look at the first one. Look at the box. <laughs> look at that. Just, just a classic franchise, right? So, just really nice to be having both of those on the shelf now. And this next game, Super Nintendo game. I always say any day I can add a box Super Nintendo game is a good day, right? So this is definitely a good day. The thing with this one is it's not a particularly uncommon game. I've seen this game quite a few times uh, out on my travels at various different game stores. But it's even more than I want to pay. The condition's not great. And I'm never like sort of going out of my way to buy it because it's not a game that I will ever play. And that's because it's a turn-based RPG. Uh, and that is Mystic Quest Legend. So this is known as Final Fantasy USA Mystic Quest in Japan. Uh, and this is basically a spin-off of the Final Fantasy series. I think what they did basically was try and simplify it for uh, a Western uh, market. I mean, it doesn't say much for us guys, does it? That Japan felt the need to uh, basically dumb down their RPGs and hope that we might sort of <laughs> latch onto them. Uh, but yeah, they sort of did this to broaden um, the sort of sales uh, around the world. And um, it was actually the first of any Final Fantasy game uh, to be released uh, in Europe. So yeah, um, it's quite an interesting title, this one. From what I understand, it kind of wasn't here nor there. That They sort of tried to dumb it down so it didn't hit with the RPG fans, and also it didn't sort of garner a new market like they intended it to do. So yeah, um, one of those games that never really caught on. Um, but like I said, it's a Super Nintendo game, and it's in really nice condition. Like really nice it's still got the nintendo seal on it there all the corners are in good condition real nice obviously there's quite a few stickers for me to remove i think this was like um a sticker that came with it for a strategy guide offer had that been intact i'd potentially have left that on um because if you look underneath it's sort of like how you can claim your strategy guide but because it's all torn i'll take that off but um yeah happy to add that and that takes me to my final and arguably biggest purchase of the day. Go on the meter. Have a sip of Yorkshire for this one. This is something which has been annoying me, right? For probably a few months now. I won't go as further than months. So basically, this is something that I could have bought years ago and I thought about buying, and it was a lot cheaper. I was looking four or five years ago and I was just never that interested for whatever reason and then the price starts to go up and you know that collector thing where when the price keeps going on you kind of like even though you don't admit it you want it more and that's just like being honest and then I started thinking to myself, why didn't I buy it and this CX this is currently like 90 pounds well they had it listed for 50 as soon as I walked in I saw it I thought I'm gonna have to have it and that is the God of War Ascension collector's edition um, so like I say, at one point, this was like, you couldn't give these away. These were like 20, 30 quid, the statues were everywhere. Uh, largely because God of War Ascension wasn't sort of like received too well. I stand by God of War Ascension. I think it's a very good game. I just don't think it's as good as the game that came before it in God of War 3. And I think that was the problem, right? It kind of was a lesser game than the one before. So obviously people are going to be a little bit disappointed uh, upon its release. Um, but the reason this was so cheap is it doesn't have a steelbook however i already own steelbook so absolutely perfect for me right i want to see what this looks like actually in here I'll tell you what we'll do it on camera because whenever i try and open these boxes with those sort of flaps i always make a mess of it so you'll be seeing it on the screen now uh, but like i said it comes with the statue so this is probably how i'll display it right this side i love the collector's editions that have these sort of like open uh, windows on them with the statues that you can see i've got quite a few now i've got quite a few on the 360 we've got dark siders um off the top of my head what else have we got we've got the duke Nukem one uh there might be something else that i've done on the cx lottery on recently that you'll be seeing very very soon um so yeah uh some uh, just happy with it basically uh, it just kind of all worked out because now I feel like I can finally lay the demons of the God of War Ascension Collector's Edition to rest. I got it for a good price. And um, yeah, I've got all the other uh, God of War Collector's Edition, apart from Ragnarok, which I actually made a video on. Uh, I'm talking about why I wouldn't be buying it. But I've got all the others. So uh, yeah, another glaring omission from my collection. Another uh, itch that has been scratched. So, or a scratch that has been itched. One of them. <laughs> So yeah, I gotta say, great day, right? Um, 
some real nice pieces. Very, very happy with everything that I was able to pick up. And you know, this is what I love to do. I love to go out, I love to hunt video games. And um, today was a day full of doing that. I might be heading to my locals tomorrow. It depends, because I've got loads to be doing. Obviously, uh, if I do, you guys will be coming along for the hunt with me. And we might as well visit another CEX, right? I don't know how many we've already been to this week. But hopefully tonight, I'm gonna tidy up a bit in here, chill out, and uh, jump back into Bioshock. I I'm really enjoying that. I put about three or four hours into it last night. And uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna sort of play through this one. Just one of them like classic games. You know, everyone's got those games that like, when you tell people you haven't played them, they're like, what, well, you've got to play it. So yeah, it just feels like one of them games that I need to experience for myself. So yeah, we're gonna crack on with that now uh, for the rest of the evening, I think. And uh, I'll catch up with you guys a bit later on. Good morning. So I did make it to my locals and what a great start that was as well. So in the very local, I found a copy of Sonic Generations. There's like, I think eight pound trading on that. So with the ratchet and clank that we've duplicated from yesterday's essentials fine, that's 12 pound CX trading. So yeah, not bad at all. And we're headed to CEX now. Right, okay, back from a real quick trip to the locals and uh, yeah, grabbed a few games from CEX. First one uh, was a Mega Drive game. You probably saw they've got a nice selection of Mega Drive there currently at Burton on Trent. Um, so if any of these titles are of interest to you, make sure you check the CEX app and uh, yeah, um, potentially get one sent out. Uh, this first one is actually for Kev. Um, I picked this one up for him. This is James Bond 007 The Duel. Never seen this game before. 
Uh, not particularly expensive game, not £15. This was complete with manual. Uh, this is, is that Timothy Dalton. Not a big Bond guy. I think so. It says on the back, James Bond 007, a name to strike fear into anyone foolish enough to cross him. Now he's back in a brand new adventure, especially for Sega. Four frantic levels. That's <laughs> not many levels, is it? Uh, fast and furious action await you. What are you waiting for? For the Mega Drive, that will be going to Kev's extensive Mega Drive collection. I, however, was fortunate enough to find a couple of, you guessed it, PlayStation 3 Essentials. First one is one that I see a few times. Um, I never used to know whether I already owned it or not, um, but I recently sort of like took pictures of it and now I also have a screenshots on my phone of my Essentials. So whenever I'm at CX and I'm perusing the shelves, I can always reference it. And that is Harry Potter Years 5 to 7, so the Lego Harry Potter games. I already own uh, Years 1 to 4, um, so that's now me done with the Harry Potters. Not too cheap this one, £6, so one of the pricier titles. Um, but yeah, that's the uh, Harry Potters ticked off the list. And then this one I was really happy to see. I've never seen this one before. And with PlayStation 3 Essentials, the price doesn't always match the rarity. Um, because as I said, they're just priced, of course, as the standard game price. Um, sometimes these games didn't sell many in the essentials range and this must be one of those because it's just one you never see and it's only two pounds fifty uh, and that is heavenly sword um, a really interesting title this one a hack and slash uh, i do own this already but obviously that will now be getting traded in um, but yeah an interesting game that i do hope to one day pick up and play but again just never ever seen it in this variant and these are the sort of ones that you want to be ticking off uh, there's a couple in here actually uh, that meet that kind of same um, criteria i think there's a pro evolution in here yeah, Pro Evolution 2015, I'd say. I've never seen this one before or since. Um, again, another cheap title. So with the Essential set, it's not all about the pricing that makes them rare. It's just the fact that sometimes they're quite scarce in this guise. And yeah, for what was a quick trip to CX, happy with that. That's now five Essentials added for the week, right? So a very good week in terms of Essentials. And a great week in terms of hunting all around. But that's the week's hunting done. So you know what that means, right? It's time to turn my focus now to the 3.0. There's a few little jobs in here I want to get sorted out, and I suppose we've got to do a montage, right? Yeah. But before we can get into the montage, I need to sort this box out. It's covered in stickers. Yeah, let's get to this. Sadly, I don't think the rest of these stickers are going to come off quite as easily. Hmm, I think I might need a hairdryer on this big boy here. Okay, so as we can see, the heat has absolutely done the trick. <clears throat> and there you go, some careful scraping later. That's completely gone. I'm now going to do the same with this one on the side. And then, you know, that'll probably just come off on its own to be fair. Yeah. And then we're going to turn our attention to this bad boy. I don't know exactly what the strategy is. Hmm, first things first. Using the heat method, I've managed to get a bit more of it off. Um, as you can see, it was like a multi-layered sticker, really thick in places. So we managed to get most of that top uh, yellow layer off, which was like almost like a booklet. Um, so now it's a case of getting this bit off. Heat alone doesn't seem to be cutting it. Um, I'm not confident it's gonna be 100% underneath here, but I mean, it's gonna look better than that, right? I think what I'm gonna do is try lighter fluid. So I think I'm gonna put a bit of lighter fluid on it not too much, because um, I previously put a bit too much on one of my games and it left like a, a ruffled effect. So we're gonna put like a light coating of it on, leave it, and then try and pull it off from there, I think. So I've been careful not to put too much on, but you can see how it's really started to absorb into the sticker. And now it's just a case of very patiently, just lightly scratching it with the nail. Okay, so this sticker is proving very stubborn. Now, this is very good stuff, but the benefits of this I tend to find are to put it on a sticker, leave it, and then peel the sticker off. If you can get the sticker off in sort of like one motion, this is perfect for that. These kind of stickers, these real thick, almost like plastic textured ones, not so much, like you can see, there's no way it's coming off in one go. So we're going to switch tactics now. Uh, I'm going to try the good old faithful Mr. Sheen or 
Audi's equivalent. <laughs> and uh, I'm just gonna spray it on, soak it, and see if I can scratch away with my thumb on it. As you can see from that bottom section, the Mr. Sheen is working. You have to do it sort of in layers, like I say, just lightly scrape at it with your nail. And um, yeah, it's starting to come off. Okay, slowly. it's taking me that long, I've decided to get comfy. But as you can see, uh, we are getting bits off. Um, the top layer is pretty much almost done now. So I've been really like carefully taking my time, slowly, slowly working off that top layer. Like I say, it's one of them stickers that was never gonna peel. The best you can hope for with a sticker is you get a corner and the whole thing peels. This was never gonna do that. It was always gonna be a layers. So it's about getting the rest of this top layer off. And then I think we'll go again with the uh, polish and then we should be able to scrape the rest of the adhesive off and then whew, we should be about well, I think I've got most of it off. So now for the satisfying bit, get a microfiber cloth, gently wipe all that rubbish off. And how are we looking? Yes, we're about there. We're about there. Not too bad at all. Probably took a tiny bit of the artwork off there, look. Tiny little dink, which could have been there before for all I know. And a tiny bit there where I tried to peel the corner a little overzealously. But generally speaking, ignore the dark bit, that'll dry. Generally speaking, that's really good. I, think I could go again and try and get even more of this light, real fine layer of adhesive off here. But, to be honest, the effort that I take, you're not gonna see it once it's in a box protector. Uh, yeah, very happy with that. And there we go, Mystic Quest, looking great. Loads better than it was before, I'm sure you'll agree. Um, yeah, I'm glad I did that because I keep getting people asking them how many times I do this, what I use to remove stickers, and that was a very difficult sticker to remove, and as a result, you've seen sort of like my full repertoire of the Mrs. Hairdryer, um, lighter fluid, and for me, the ever faithful, you can't really go too far wrong with some sort of like furniture polish. So yeah, that's done. Now, we can crack on with the montage. Right, okay, I got distracted. I steal battalion. Right, let's do the montage. Okay, so I decided to pop the God of War Ascension Collector's Edition down there. There wasn't any room in the sort of PS3 area. Um, so what I've done is I've popped it down here. I've moved the 2018 God of War Collector's Edition next to it. Um, we've also added the PS2 Godfather set with the other big box PS2 stuff, so that works well. I've moved the Killzone helmet over, and uh, yeah, we've got a nice bit of space to work with here and here. Um, one day I will sort of, as I say, make more of a display of the Lego army. Um, but yeah, happy with that, and now that everything's been put away, I can turn my attention to a couple of other jobs in here. I also made this little arcade area where I've got Pac-Man <laughs> playing Pac-Man, uh, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, anyway, as I say, moving on to uh, jobs that need doing. So, this standee here, oh, it, it's had so many homes, right? Um, the traveller of my standee community. I love this thing. But because it's not too big, I keep moving it around to make space for bigger, harder to house things. The obvious place really now is behind Master Chief in that top corner. The only issue is I don't want to sort of like deflect from Chief. I like the fact that he's got like plain white behind him. Um, I think it makes him sort of stand out more. And like I say, I'm not trying to fill every inch of this room. 
currently there is a gap there, but I don't want this to live there. This is going to be for something else up there um, over time, something bigger, or I'm going to extend these shelves out. So, yeah, let's find a forever home for this guy. You know, when you try something and it works so well, you just think, why didn't I do that before? Bang. I mean, it's like it was meant to be there, right? I suppose because we used to have the that standee there, that space was never available. Obviously, it needs raising slightly and putting properly on the wall. I've just rested it on the plug sockets to get an idea, but I think that works really well um, in that space there. Yeah, um, perfect. So that's that problem sorted out. There is, after doing that, the issue of this big box, which has been sitting around my room for a couple of weeks. Now. Which contained this fantastic standee. I love this thing. I got this stupidly cheap off eBay. It was like six pound or something. Um, I love it. I'd love to be able to display it, but there's just, I've just got to accept defeat, right? I just can't see anywhere in here this will go. Um, might have to end up in little man's bedroom. Yeah, I think that's the only course of action. Gets you out of here, I guess. Okay, so I've affixed uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 to the wall. I didn't want to bring it too high because if you come too high, you see the bottom of it and then it creates a gap. So I think it just fits perfectly. Just sort of like resting on top of the plug socket. Um, I also haven't affixed the top and I quite like the 3D effect. I quite like the shadow it gives off. But yeah, I just think the placement is absolutely perfect there in that corner uh, when you walk in. Um, yeah, and it just feels like there's the right amount of things in this area now. So yeah, very happy with that. Um, little man's got the standee in his room, so that's been done. He's more than happy with that. And yeah, these we're going to be opening on Wednesday's video, so keep it locked for that. Otherwise, that's pretty much all the jobs except for this pair. Now, I love these. You guys know. These are some of my favourite things in the room, but I just can't find a forever home. I want them like prominently on display in the room, but then there's no real estate left to do so. So yeah, I'm not too sure. I don't really like anything that's going on with this cabinet. So I think maybe our next week's vlog will empty this and uh, yeah, do something different with that. But everything else uh, I'm pretty happy with. So yeah, let's get clean. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't you say it. Don't even think about it. Don't do it. The room is looking better than ever. <laughs> oh, I love ending the week on that one. Uh, yeah, really happy with it. We've got the nice placement there of Ryu and Saga. And uh, yeah, like I say, just those few jobs now that we'll tackle next week. I do have a plan for something behind Chief, Chief as well. Uh, so yeah, we'll definitely be cracking on next week as well as can't forget, I've got to do something with this Mega Drive guy, right? Uh, this needs housing. Uh, such a fantastic piece that will really like, yeah, cherry on top. So that's going to do it, guys, for another ghetto vlog and a week filled with haunting. And what I'm going to take away from this week is not only the great finds, but the way in which I've done it. I've not really spent a penny. I think I've spent, that's a lie, I think I've spent about £3.50 on the couple of charity shop finds that we've had. Everything else has come um, basically as a fruit of the labor of what we do here, right? All the hunting, the wheeling and the dealing, the hustling, charity shop finds, um, generating vouchers at CDX, that kind of thing. Um, spent £3.50, obviously associated costs come into it, fuel and all that kind of stuff, but I love going out and hunting anyway. So for me, that's just yeah, neither here nor there, but in the grand scheme of things, amazing additions, not spent much money, Room's looking, you already know. Uh, so yeah, I don't think we can ask for much more. Uh, I've got those two boxes down there, as I say. Uh, that's gonna be a big CEX lottery. Potentially the last one we ever do because they were ordered before the changes, the with and the without the manual. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be a real lottery. Uh, probably the last one, uh, right? So yeah, make sure you keep it locked to the channel and check that out on Wednesday. But as always, thank you very much for watching. It is much appreciated. Uh, I'd love to know from you guys what you think this room needs. Where are we at now? 
uh, what would you do? Where would you place Ryu and Sagat? I'm pretty happy with where they are, to be honest. I think that's the best home I've had for them thus far. But yeah, much appreciated. Play your games. Keep it retro. I'll see you all on Wednesday in a bit. Welcome to the Retro Get Show. Yeah. Get Troll! <laughs> Lock into the Retro Get Show. Oh.